Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and in this video I am going to explain some numerical methods to compute inverse kinematics of robot manipulators. The aims of the presentation are first to learn how to compute the inverse kinematics using numerical methods and most importantly which implications it has above all, what it implies. We will discuss the use of inverse and pseudo-inverse of the Jacobian matrix, particularly at singular configurations. Also, the utility of the pseudo-inverse in case of redundant robot manipulators. Finally, I will explain through an example the limitations of computing the inverse kinematics using numerical methods, since we will not always be able to obtain numerical stable solutions. In first place, let us recall our problem statement. Our goal is to find out the final configuration that a robot manipulator must have so that its, its end effector uh, reaches a given target position and orientation, that is, a target reference frame. The robot will be at a different configuration than the desired one. We can compute the position of the end effector at any time from a given configuration. The problem is that the inverse relation it is very complex or simply unknown. And therefore, we will use numerical methods to obtain the value of the final configuration that the robot must have, so that the error between the position of the reference frame and the current position is as small as possible. As a consequence, the solution will be an approximation, not an exact solution. It is well known that the Jacobian matrix is a mapping that allows obtaining a linear relationship between the changes in the joint variables and the changes in the end effector. Its inverse allows us to obtain just the opposite relationship, which, in this case, it will be used to iteratively obtain a new configuration based on Neithon's Rapson method, used to obtain the roots of a nonlinear equation. It's an iterative method with no guarantee of convergence, but uh, it can be said that for configurations close to the desired one, the method should work reasonably well. Except for one important consideration, the Jacobian matrix is not always invertible, as is the case of singular configurations. So, if the solution passes close by a singularity, the inverse Jacobian matrix tends to cause a very large jump on the configuration, which makes the method numerically unstable. In order to apply this method, the Jacobian matrix must be a square anyway. So, this implies that the robot is not redundant and it has as many degrees of freedom as a task. Obviously, uh, some of the problems mentioned above uh, can be solved uh, with the use of the pseudo-inverse, known as moore perot pseudo-inverse. In the case uh, the robot tax has fewer degrees of freedom than the robot degrees of freedom, then this is the case when the robot is redundant, and the Jacobian matrix is not a square and has more columns than rows, and multiple solutions can be found. The obtained solution using the pseudo-inverse is the solution with the minimum norm in the configuration vector. In that case, the pseudo-inverse matrix can be computed from the SVD decomposition of the Jacobian matrix and, to avoid some numerical problems of the moore perot expression, we can force to zero some of the eigenvalues for a given tolerance and compute the pseudo-inverse matrix from the indicated expression on the right. This offers a much better numerically stable solution, particularly in singularities, since the moore perot expression cannot be calculated in these situations, while the calculation from the SVD decomposition is still possible. In order to compute the inverse kinematic problem numerically, we will apply the previous iterative method with the main difference that we will use now the pseudo-inverse instead of the inverse matrix and we have also incorporated here a parameter that will determine the step of the iterative method. The smaller the alpha parameter, the fewer divergence the problems the method will present, but it will take more iterations to converge to the solution. Therefore, it is a parameter that we must 
choose properly so the method works as expected. As before, for the initial configurations close to the final configuration, the method will work reasonably well. In the case of redundant robots, multiple solutions can be provided. In that sense, the projection of a vector on the null space of the Jacobian matrix will not affect to the minimization error between the final position and the end effector. And therefore, we could always seek for alternative solutions, for instance, solutions that try to avoid joint limits or solutions close to some uh, given configuration. This is an advanced topic that will be not covered in this presentation. An alternative method to the pseudo-inverse computation consists of a solution based on the so-called damped least squares method or DLS. It is a method that seeks to obtain the minimization of the error as proposed before, but now it includes a regularization term that penalizes the solution with a large norm. The new inverse relation of the Jacobian, it is indicated in the expression in the middle of this slide, in which the regularization term lambda avoids the singularity of the Jacobian matrix. For small lambda values, the value of the pseudo-inverse matrix will basically be the same as if lambda were zero, particularly when we are not close to a singularity. In singularities, this term will make the matrix invertible and numerically stable. As before, we can apply the method iteratively to compute the final configuration of the inverse kinematic problem using Newton's method. Here we show a comparative analysis between the two methods described, the pseudo-inverse and the damped least squares method. The objective is to see if the methods are able to converge to the final configuration given a final reference position. This final configuration it is obviously known for us, but we seek to know the region that provides numerically stable results and converges to the final solution in the case of a two degrees of freedom planar robot. We can see that the region of stable solutions degrades with an increase of the iteration step parameter for the pseudo-inverse uh, method. Obviously, the smaller the step, the more iterations you need to converge, but it is a trade-off between these two aspects. For the damped least squares method, the region degrades with the, decreases, uh, the decrease of the regularization parameter lambda. In general, the parameterization used for the figures in the right column, it is more than sufficient for configurations where the initial configuration is close to the final solution. However, as it can be appreciated, that the damped least squares method provides a numerically more stable solutions, particularly uh, for configurations where the initial configuration is at a singularity. I mean, specifically for this robot, these are configurations that correspond to a joint uh, or values for the joint two, where they take uh, values uh, half pi or minus half pi. In those cases, the pseudo-inverse method presents numerical problems if the step size is too big. In this presentation, numerical methods for, for computing the inverse kinematics of uh, robot manipulators have been introduced. Specifically, I have explained the pseudo-inverse method and the damped least squares method, providing a comparative example between both methods. Thank you.